And are you going to be like, and you're watching after I say my name? Yep. Okay. And this is Low to the Craft. And I'll just give you notes. I say, and this is no, Low to the Craft. No, I will, I will. Okay. You just intro yourself after me. Cool. Cool. All right. Yeah. So. What's up? It's Mike Traprari. Hi, I'm Emin from Games We Play, or Games We... I'm just, I'm the only member of Games We Play. It's just like, I don't know how to introduce myself. <laughs> and this is Low to the Craft. And thank you so much for taking time to sit with me and chat. Yeah. I've been a fan of what you've been doing since before, like the pandemonium of like people, like I think the masses finding out about what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and like, it's been crazy. It's been what, a year and a half, two years now, I think? Uh, of touring, I started touring in May of 2022, which yeah. is about what you called me. Yeah, yeah, crazy. And you were hustling a lot before that. Like, oh, yeah. let's go back to the beginning. Like what made you want to be a musician and in this scene, like what moment was that like, this is it, this yeah. is what I want to do? Um, my dad was in a band growing up. I know. Yeah. I played with your dad. Yeah. I was, I was in a punk band called No Trigger and we played with him in the I gotta tell him, tell you. Yes, dude, tell him I said what's up. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, he got me into it. He actually was the one who like pushed me playing drums. Cool. Um, all this stuff. And yeah, his band was called Glass Eater and he took me to a show once, or his reunion show. And I was like, wow, this is sick. And it kind of just lived in my brain forever. And then in ninth grade, when I was 15 years old, my dad was like, hey, like, my friend produced a, Re a Weezer record. And like, he wants to produce your music. His name is Mark McCluskey. Um, and yeah, I basically made two songs with him. And that was like what the start of games we play. Yeah. And then I played local shows for seven years to no one. And like, you know, like when you're in a local band and you get really fixated on a show and you just start hustling and like start flyering at schools and all that stuff. Yeah. Like every once in a while I'd have that 100 kid show. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. But like it was seven years of nothing, you yeah. know, just trying. Yeah. And like, what was your favorite part about those days? Because obviously it's different. I mean, you just played in front of yeah. how many people? 50,000 probably? I played in front of a lot of like people. Like maybe 65,000 <laughs> even. Like wh what does that A feel like? Yeah. And what are your favorite moments remembering playing to nobody and like flying and hustling so hard? To be honest, I guess it's maybe a little sad. I don't know. I love how many wins there was, you know? Yeah. I like go back on my Facebook and I was like, I, we went from 140 monthly listeners to 150. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And now it's like, got across a million. Like it's yeah. so hard. Yeah. But like, I love how. And I, it still means this much. It's just, I guess it's just harder, but like it really meant a lot to me. And yeah. every tiny, every tiny little thing was a really big win for me. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I love that. And I like love thinking about the funny parts of these weird local shows I would book. Like I remember there was this 30 cap club in South Florida called Inkwell Pub that they accidentally booked two shows. And like we all showed up, 10 bands. And I was like, okay, we all got to play. I played at three in the morning to two people, yeah. to two other band members. Yeah. And it was weird, it was horrible, but it was it's funny looking back, you know? Yeah, yeah, dude, there's something to be said in the, the picture I'm trying to paint in these interviews and chats I'm having mm -hmm. with like-minded musicians and people that are out there actively making a name for themselves and or may already have made a name for themselves is that you have to hustle and it's enjoy the process, right? Yeah. So there's something to be said, I feel, for you going and making flyers. That yeah. doesn't happen a lot anymore, right? No. Like social media is obviously the thing that it is. Yeah. And you can use it, if you use it the right way, you can really continue to get those wins. And yeah. you've done an incredible job at Thank marketing you. yourself and like making it fun. And I watch stuff that you do and I'm like, dang, like I, I take little tidbits from it and I'm like, what can I do and, and correlate that to SJC? Yeah. And it's motivated me to look at it in a different way. Instead of being jaded and going, oh man, I miss the days of going to Kinko's and like flying because that was fun and easy. Yeah. This isn't fun and easy. It's really you, hard. It's really hard, but you're making it fun. Like what are some of the things that you like about your like miss about flying, but yeah. also like about the fact that social media is what it is now? Well, I will say like, you and other people online like see the fun stuff but like what you don't see is the days that like i'm like i can't think of anything funny yeah. and if i don't make a good video that gets millions of views like my band's not going to grow right. so like it's it's really hard yeah um and like the thing i miss about flyering it was just like i, I probably thought about it different in the moment but looking back it was just like it was innocent and yeah. i was trying to gain one fan 
yeah. and now I'm trying to gain a lot of fans. Right. You know, but I, I love that. And also, back in the day, flowering was the way I hit on girls. So <laughs> I would like, I was 12, or, or I, was, I was 14, I would like DM them from the band account, like, yeah. hey, follow my personal. Yeah. 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 They're like, oh, that's your person. I didn't even know that existed. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a funny way of putting it with obviously, you know, hitting on a girl, but like networking. And I think that's something so special and organic the way you did it. And I did a very similar way. I'd go to Warped Tour and Flyer. Yeah. You meet people. And yeah. You might meet someone that's like, oh, hey, I'm looking for a drum set. Yeah. Similar story I had. I was in that band I was telling you about, and we played a show at the Knitting Factory, and randomly All Time Low was opening for us. And we're like, who's this pop punk band? In All Brooklyn? Time Low? Yeah, at the Knitting Factory in Brooklyn. It was like one of the last shows, I think, that they, they had there. Yeah. And we were a hardcore punk band. They're All Time Low mm-hmm. before they were massive. Before yeah. they were really, you know, they were hustling. They had the swoop hairs. Yeah. Okay. And like, but I was there, they had the swoop hairs. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I met them and I'm like, dude, like this is an opportunity to network and like find, yeah. obviously now it's all time low. Ryan's yeah. been with us for almost two decades. And like, yeah. there's something really important and I think super special about that. And even if it is sending a DM or a cold email or going to a show and trying to meet the band or yeah. like find a way to get to them, right? Like have you found big, big wins or even small wins from doing stuff like that? Well, I'll say the interesting thing is, is I didn't stop flyering. Like, after my shows, I go out with a bunch of stickers and I say, follow my Instagram, follow my Instagram, follow my yeah, Instagram. Yeah. Um, so my, like, I had a kind of a moment on the internet. I'm sure you saw that video in January. Mm-hmm. Um, five days before I moved to LA and five days, like the day after I moved, Jaden Hostler, who's on Travis Barker's record label, yeah. um, had a show. And at this point, I don't have a song. I don't have anything. Nobody knows who I am. Yeah. And I was handing out CDs to what would go on to be like my big, bigger song. And nobody reciprocated, nothing. The song pops off on the internet. And then I start getting like DMs from big artists. Like, did you just give me, didn't you give me a CD like five days ago? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, like, like that was me. I still do that stuff. Um, awesome. Yeah, I mean like, I feel like you have to do both. And yeah. when I did both, it worked in like, in perfection. Yeah. You know? That's awesome. You were putting it out there. I mean, you were literally sending messages to the universe but also hustling and that networking connection when you put it out there it's going to reciprocate maybe not immediately five yeah. days later is pretty quick yep could be a year or two later i've had things like that happen where it's like wow i'm so glad i stayed there i said hey or i did whatever because it came back and it it was a big win at that point i looking back i guess this is the biggest lesson and i still have to remind myself today because i don't like think about it but the work that i was putting in back in the day and putting in a year ago, like you're, if you don't see results, like you're still hustling and it will work out in another way that yeah. maybe that you're not expecting. Yeah. But like it does show up like today, like I haven't played a show in a while and I was so worried that nobody was going to come. I haven't headlined in a while. I was really worried today. It was an, it was insane how many people were singing my lyrics. And yeah. I told my manager, I was like, this is like a turning point. Like I didn't know this many people cared. And it was yeah. fucking awesome. It's awesome. And you yeah. can genuinely feel that too. You make the post. We talk about social media. Like you have to you have to put yourself out there. And when you're in a creative rut and you're like, oh, like I don't want it. You want to put the most genuine stuff out. Yeah. You've always been very genuine. That's what attracted me to like, yo, I'm going to hit you up. You need yeah. drums? Like let's talk. Yeah. You know, and I've always loved watching you do that because what you put out is genuine. And when something, a big win like today happens and yesterday, yeah. seeing you post that, it's just like, dude, that's awesome. Like, yeah, it makes people want to root for you. And I, and I'm, I've always been in your corner just like Hell watching yeah. Thank you. Your, your successes and everything that you're doing. And I know it's not easy. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you mentioned earlier, like, gosh, I have these days. Like, what do you do when you get in a creative rut? Do you have any sort of process you go through mentally or do you just let it sit? Like, what do you do when you're in that position? Well, well to be honest, so this whole year, um, I was touring from February to September. I did not go home and it was really, really hard to the point where I like canceled my biggest tour yet because like I was just bummed. It was, was, I wasn't putting my full self, putting my full self into, into what I was doing. Yeah. You know, like into the promotion, into the show. Like I take pride in my show. And like when I go out, like I try to be good and like, I try to rearrange my songs and all this stuff. Mm. And, um, I just like it, I realized I like wasn't there. So I put it back I, I pulled it back the tour. And I was like, okay, I'm in a creative rut right now. So mm. to be honest, like this When We Were Young Fest was 
unbelievable. It was so emotional for me. It was great. Good. But like right now, I'm in that rut, getting out of that rut. Um, and my manager today, she was like, hey, today's show was like the first I've seen of Emin in a long time. Oh, and man. I was like, yeah. So I don't know, like if you're, it just takes time. Yeah. If you want a viral video tomorrow, you're not going to get it. You know, yeah, it, yeah, it doesn't yeah. work like that. For sure, dude. That, I just got chills when you said that because I've gone through that multiple times in my company and in life and mm -hmm. when I was in a band and all that creative stuff and props to you. Like that's amazing to be able to be self-aware, to be like, I just got to time out right now because this isn't going to be good for you mentally and, and personally and it's not going to be good for, you know, the band, the band and all that yeah. sort of stuff. So, mm -hmm good for you for being self-aware on you. that. You know, that's a huge part of it. And stuff like this, you know, you're right. The process and the flow of creativity doesn't just always come. And again, being self-aware to put the time out, it will come in moments like this. Yeah. will give you that win. So what's next for you? You know, like obviously that's a big question, you know, with, yeah. with you still potentially being in that rut, but yeah. you have obviously gone from hustling, playing to, you know, nobody, two yeah. people flyer and handing out CDs just a couple years ago, you know, you getting signed to the label you're on and being mm -hmm. with the people and the team you're on, mm -hmm. I have been a fan of all of those people. And a lot of those people have helped me and my company get to the next level. Yeah, and they've they become, played your drums. Yeah, and they've become mentors and, and peers, of, uh, peers of mine have become, you know, you know, creative outlets for me to bounce ideas yeah. off of. So what is, I guess, next for you on your, you know, goals list to try to accomplish? Okay, so... I postponed the tour till March. The tour's booked. So I want that entire tour to be fully sold out. Yeah. And I've never done anything like that before. My first headline tour, I did nine shows and I think six sold out. But I'm doing 22 shows and I want, I like, my phone background is, this will sell out. Amazing. Um, and that's my goal. My album's gonna come out right before that. Life's going great. It was actually supposed to come out last month. Um, but that came with the postponement because this record is like kind of a b autobiography of everything that's happened in the past year and it's been mm -hmm. a really hard year. Um, and now like I, I'm trying to get out of that rut so I'm trying to write songs about mm -hmm. turning things around. The whole record's really sad. So now I'm trying to be like, I'm getting out of this, it's okay. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, my goal right now is to make a life-changing record. And I, like, yeah, life-changing for me. Yeah. Which obviously I want, but like, I want to show people that like I'm going through this and like, in a in a beautiful song way. Yeah. But like, I want to make people feel, you know. That's amazing. And sell out that tour and like, that's what I'm worried about right now. Life's Dude. going great. Dude, you will, and your genuineness in that is such a component that people love about what you do, including mm -hmm. myself. Like, mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a fan of music. I obviously love the drums, like first and foremost. Yeah. But everything. It's taken, it's been a minute since I've seen an artist come out and it's just like, I feel like what they're doing is right and genuine. And you're obviously gathering creative people that are wanting you to succeed. Yeah. Um, and it's really cool to see. So you will sell out that tour and you're doing it the right way, I feel. Thank you. Know? you. You're not just writing stuff and doing stuff to just do it. You're like taking it as your whole being. And yeah. You can't lose after all that, in my opinion. Thank you. You know, you're welcome. Thank and thank you for having me on this. Uh, Dude, for sure. I have to say before this ends, my mom bought me a uh, Pearl Export series or something. Yep. No, what's the one? What's the one right above Export? Mass. It's a Birch something. Birch? I don't know what's after Export. What? Whatever. A Pearl kit. And when I was a kid, I brought it into a local music shop, and I, I traded in, and I there was an SJC kit there. Yeah. And I called my mom and I begged her for 700 bucks Amazing. and it was a giant like pastel green with a huge kick drum yep. um, and it was awesome and that was like the coolest drums that I have and I really regret selling it oh man um, but it's cool that we're doing this because I've yeah. been a fan for a very long time amazing dude that means a lot and when your videos came out and it was like okay like I've seen this dude and now all of a sudden it's like happening mm -hmm. in the video I'm like before I even finished the video I'm like sending an email like, yo, mm -hmm. we got to get an SJC kit. And I'm watching the video. I'm like, there's an SJC kit already. You have the white kit with the red hoops. Mm -hmm. I was so stoked to see that. Yeah. So like, thank you for including us, even though we hadn't had a relationship at that yeah. point. Yeah. That means a lot. And we will have an SJC kit on that tour for sure. Hell yeah. I'm going to get, is Chase going to be drumming yeah. on that tour? Yeah. Dope. We're going to get him a kit for that tour. Hell tonight, yeah. For sure. I want you guys in the fam and it means a lot like watching you and being a part of this. And I have gone through those creative ruts as well. Yeah. You know, I feel like as I've gotten older that 
fire and gusto that I had as a kid. And you know, you kind of mentioned, touched mm -hmm. on it a couple times. It's like, oh man, it's like that window of like those those big wins then that mm -hmm. were small compared to the like, holy crap, like I got to do thousands or millions of that now. Mm -hmm. It really does take a toll. Mm -hmm. And that is what I think a lot of musicians, especially, but creatives don't think about when they're trying to like make it. They have mm -hmm. that desire to like, I got to get signed or I got to do X, Y, and Z. And then it happens and it's like, oh crap, like this is another, this is a level up. I didn't know yeah. all this came with it, but what a beautiful part of the process, Yeah. right? And so I've gone through those creative ruts as well. And like watching you and doing your stuff, as I've mentioned, has helped me come out of that a few yeah. times or like this social media stuff. I'm like, dude, you're so clever at it and creative and it's freaking awesome. Thank you. And just the support and you saying that means a lot. Yeah. So I'm really grateful for Thank you. You, know, you and I'm rooting for you and I am love watching your success so far and I hope you can enjoy all of it. Hell yeah. And, and the creative ruts is like, it's crazy because it happens to everyone and nobody talks about it. Yeah, dude. But even the biggest artists, I guarantee are like going, oh, so many are going through the same thing I'm going through right now. A hundred percent, dude. And you're yeah. right. It's like taboo to talk about it, but it's like, can't we all help each other because we are all going through that? Yeah. You know, I have a six year old son and I'll talk to him about stuff. And yeah. just, just to get his perspective. Yeah. Cause I'm like, that's actually a really cool way to think about that. Like, yeah. or Hell like yeah. that's the, the way I should do it. Thank you, bro. Like, yeah, that's my mom for me. You know what I'm saying? You have to find those support systems around you. My dad was always that for me. Mm -hmm. I've got a great team of, of people and creatives and even the Triworks crew, like helping me like bounce ideas. Like, Oh my gosh, like it seems so simple, but it's just that tweak. Mm -hmm. And it's like your, 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 the support is the, the gasoline on the fuel, you know, the fuel to the fire to yeah. make it burn brighter and bigger, you know? Yeah. So really cool. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time and chatting. Hell yeah. That wow. was amazing. Yeah. Holy wow. God, I don't think we could ever do that again. Yeah. We, we can't well, ever do it again because we can't top it. Never. Yeah. So thank you so much, man. And, you know, awesome seeing you guys play. This was incredible. Hell and yeah. I hope you can go home and relax and, you know, get better, get better, dude. You will. Yeah. Be amazing. Thank you. Hell yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having right me, on. dude. You're welcome. Yeah. Oh, yeah.